Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So please check the link in the description or click the join button below for more details. My name is Saba, and today we're investigating two models that can be used to test whether a fund manager or you, as a manager of your own portfolio, is able to time the market. That is to correctly anticipate market movements in terms of the overall sentiment, in terms of the overall trend. And that distinguishes market timing ability or macro forecasting from the ability to generate alpha or micro forecasting. Obviously, fund managers can deliver value to their clients and shareholders if they pick undervalued stocks that have good risk-adjusted performance. However, they can also anticipate the movements of the market and delever their portfolio, invest in risk-free assets when they anticipate a market downturn and continue to be exposed to market risk if they anticipate a bullish trend, an upward market movement or even take on leverage to gain more exposure to this upward movement. And this is what the two models that we investigate today seek to test. The first one, the most famous one perhaps, is the trainer Mazui model that has been developed in 1966. And this augments the Kappa model with a squared excess market return term. This model is quite simple and uh, it assumes the value of market timing that is represented by this parameter gamma can be contained in either delevering or taking on excess leverage subject to bearish or bullish forecasts respectively. And if gamma is positive and significant, it means that your fund manager is a good macro forecaster and that they add value to the portfolio by anticipating these movements and acting accordingly. Whereas if gamma is negative, it means that the fund manager has negative macro forecasting ability and makes mistakes exposing their clients and shareholders to negative returns subject to market movements or swings. However, Hendrickson and Merton in 1981 have proposed an alternative model that incorporates market timing more rigorously from a theoretical standpoint, arguably. They argue that market timing can be conceptualized as a value of a free put option that a fund manager provides to their clients when the market is going down by delevering their portfolio. Hendrickson and Merton have less um, emphasis on taking on access leverage when the market is going up. Rather, they are assuming that most of the market time and value is associated with uh, diligent and uh, pr prudent decision, diligent and prudent decision making on the downside. And obviously both models have their theoretical merit and today we'll compare them and contrast them in terms of their performance and we'll apply it to five prominent and quite different exchange traded funds or ETFs. And we've got data on all of them for a two year period daily. And those are the ARK Innovation Fund, which is a sectoral actively managed fund the long short fund that performs pair trading, a downside hedged exchange traded fund, a risk parity fund, by the way, we have implemented the uh, risk parity strategy in one of our previous videos, so check this out if you're interested, as well as a sector rotation fund that invests in counter cyclical stocks when they expect a recession and in pro cyclical stocks when they expect a recovery or an expansion. And let's see whether those five funds have an ability to macro forecast, or at least to micro forecast, and we relate two of those, representing alpha and gamma, as our uh, fund manager ability parameters. And obviously, as our market proxy, we'll use S&P 500. One of the key features of both Trainer Mazui and Hendrickson Merton models is that we need to estimate them in excess return form. That means that when we calculate returns, we have to subtract the risk-free rate. And this risk-free rate comes from the Kenneth French database. So here, to calculate the excess return of 
ARKK in the first day, we divide the total return index today by the total return index yesterday, we subtract 1, and we also subtract the risk for rate in a particular day with the column locked, as the risk for rate is the same for all five funds and the market as well. That means that we can drag it across and all the way down, applying it throughout. Now, for the trainer Mazui model, we need the squared access market return term that we can implement quite easily over here. And for the Henriksen Merton model, we need to refer to the access return of the market here. And we need to implement the option, the logic of the put option here which would be the maximum of zero and the negative excess return of the market, meaning that we would gain extra return when the market is going down. And now we can estimate those models using a simple regression. For trainer Mazui, we would select a three by five cell range and apply the Linus function. And let's start with the ARKK fund regressing its daily access return onto the two explanatory variables, that is the access market return and access market return squared from the uh, trainer Mazui model. We'll need the constant here that represents alpha, our micro forecasting fund manager ability, and we need the additional statistics to test for significance. And that returns our uh, Linus template. And we can see that whereas alpha is positive, our gamma is quite strongly negative, suggesting that the fund manager of this fund has negative market timing ability. For example, getting into high-tech stocks near their all-time highs and subjecting their clients to uh, subsequent downturns. However, to test whether it's a rigorously um, significant result, we can apply the t-test, uh, dividing the coefficients by the respective standard errors and dragging it across. And we can calculate the p-value using the two-tailed t-distribution. t-dist two-tailed, the absolute value of the t-statistic, and referring to the degrees of freedom here that we need to lock column-wise. Another application would be to test for the difference of beta not from 1, but rather from 1. Another uh, application could be to test for the... Uh, beta significance not compared to zero, as we know that most of the funds would be exposed to some kind of market risk, but from one, which would uh, imply whether either our fund is defensive with a beta much lower than one, aggressive with a beta higher than one, or exposed to roughly the same amount of risk as the market at large. So here, to implement this, we can amend this formula and put uh, not the coefficient in the denominator, not the beta, but beta minus one. And that means that we have got uh, evidence to, to suggest that this fund is aggressive. Uh, these technological innovation driven stocks have higher betas. That's to be expected. It has negative market time and ability, meaning that perhaps these stocks are bought near their all time highs on the wave of hype, arguably. And it has a positive but insignificant alpha meaning that there might be some positive micro forecasting ability. However, it's not statistically significant. And let's check whether our results hold in the Henriksen Merton model. We can just copy that, paste it in the three by five cell range here and refer to the explanatory variables from the Henriksen Merton model here. And to save time, we can copy these T stats and P values as such. And for the Henriksen Merton model, we'll have a strikingly different result. Still, the market timing ability is negative. However, our beta is insignificantly different from one, and our alpha is positive, meaning that, quite insightfully, the manager of such an innovation driven fund has quite substantially positive micro forecasting ability, but negative macro forecasting ability. And that allows us to dissect the sources of value that a fund manager is able to deliver to their clients and shareholders. And let's apply the same technique to the second fund in our list, the long short um, equity hedge fund. Just changing the column references in both models. And we see that the 
long short equity hedge delivers positive alpha, at least in the Henriksen Merton model. It is defensive in both models, which is unsurprising, given that long short equity hedge uh, seeks to be defensive. And market timing is negative still. Which of the funds could have a positive market timing? Let's check for the downside hedged fund over here. And we can see that the downside hedged fund delivers quite well in terms of both being defensive and having positive market timing properties, which means that downside hedging uh, does work both in the sense of Trainer Mazui and Henriksen Merton. However, the striking difference here is that Henriksen Merton model highlights the negative alpha that this fund has, meaning that perhaps the assets with hedging properties that this fund employs are overpriced in the sense of CAPM or in the sense of CAPM plus market timing model, which is also insightful. And we can already see that Henriksen Merton model can be more insightful in the sense that it uh, shows uh, more significant alpha coefficients. So we can generate more robust inferences with regards to that. And that uh, has to do with the squared term this model um, enforces, the trainer Mazui model, which uh, is not necessarily consistent with the strategies that most funds perform, as not all funds are willing to take on extra leverage subject to uh, a bullish forecast. Most of the time, they would indeed time the market asymmetrically, exiting risky positions when they expect a downturn, or hedging the downside risk, as is the case with this fund. And let's just cover the uh, remaining two funds. Let's see if risk parity can deliver positive market timing and check it in both models. And we can see that while risk parity does deliver alpha and does deliver defensive properties, market timing is not its strongest feature. And that's quite um, reasonable, given the fact that uh, risk parity portfolios uh, do strive for consistent allocations rather than shifted allocations based on the market conditions. And finally, let's test whether sectoral rotation funds would time the market, which they theoretically should do, given that they seek to get exposure to and get a normal return on the prediction of the business cycle. And we can see that in those two models, the market timing coefficients are positive, albeit insignificant, meaning that sectoral rotation funds do not show substantial um, macro forecasting ability, uh, at least in the terms of the stock market. They might indeed have that or possess that with the sense of the macroeconomic indicators that they seek to target. And that is how to interpret the Trainer Missouri and Henriksen Merton model results in application to real world exchange traded funds that are managed actively. As we can see, the Henriksen Merton model is overall uh, quite a bit more insightful in the sense that it possesses this quite a uh, nice theoretical property of interpreting the gamma coefficient as the payoff of the free put option the fund manager provides to its clients and shareholders. And it also provides less noisy estimates and it provides a significant alpha, either to the negative side or to the positive side, in uh, more estimations, which can be interpreted as evidence in favor of using Henriksen Merton rather than Trainer Mazui. However, for best practice, apply both when your task is to evaluate the market timing or macro forecasting uh, capabilities of a fund manager. And that's all there is for the Trainer Mazu and Harrison Merton applications in Excel. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any further suggestions for videos in business, finance, or economics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and consider support on Patreon. Thank you very much and stay tuned.